Hello everyone, this is Jack from Visual Effects. So today I just want to look at Octane Scatter and how you can use it to build a city. We'll be going through two techniques, one of which you might already know, which is just the scattering on a vertex map. But if you've come across the problem where a client or you don't like where one building is and then you try to change it and it screws everything up, then the second part of the tutorial is just for you because that is where we break up the city into little sections that you can manipulate and move around so that you can build a city that you can keep on changing and iterating until you get it right. So I've found myself in the past just trying to create a skyline that looks pretty but then when you start moving around it starts to break the illusion that it's a real city. So it's good to actually build a city and then probably plan your shot afterwards. So let's jump in. So we've selected these buildings from a bunch of kits. Tokyo, Neo 2, Shanghai and then another kit from um, kit bash so if we just render to show you what we've got at the moment so we've set up a really bright light source and we've selected these buildings all textured and ready to scatter so let's pause that render let's get it out of the way and what we want to do is we'll leave the segments like this so that there's a big enough gap between the two streets and what we will do is we will move this probably about there make this editable the plane we can call this so that it makes it look all a lot neater city map probably shouldn't have spaces and then we'll just quickly go to a bird's eye view and let's draw how we want our city to be leaving plenty of space for a road So once you've got something that you're happy with in terms of distribution, what we'll do is we'll go Shift and C and then type in set vertex weight. It's already popped up for me just because I've already been checking that it's working because the octane's a bit buggy. That will be set to default of zero, but we want to set that to 100, which then creates this nice looking map, which means anywhere that's yellow, we'll get buildings. Anywhere that's red, we won't. But you can easily invert that as well. You can tweak this with a white brush as well, if it's not quite what you wanted, and get rid of the smoothness a bit. But we'll see what this does first. So now we've got our map. We'll call this vertex. We we'll call this vertex map city v map, and you can literally invert it by doing that. So now what we need to do is we need to create an octane scatter, and we'll call this city distribution what we need to do with this is we need to not have these buildings in these folders so just get them all out so even though they're nice and organized and just put them all in as individual objects so they all sit within the city distribution now. Then we need to jump into our city distribution and change it from surface and we want to call this surface the city map so now you'll see what it's doing it's populating all the buildings along there. Just for this example just whilst we're checking the render and stuff we'll lower this number to about 50 oh, probably a bit more. So if we send this to the render now what we'll notice is that it distributes across the whole plane which could be a good look if you was going for a real density so then we just need to go back to our city distribution get our vertex map and drop it into the vertex map so once you've dragged in the vertex map it's going to look like this so we need to just make it a bit more dense for a city so we'll just make that for about 800 instead of a count and then what we'll notice is we've lost our roads so what we need to do is we just need to go back into our vertex and just invert so we get our streets back it's worth applying a asphalt material or a road material on this so that any light bouncing up will look quite normal and realistic rather than just it being plain white 
because white reflects too much off the ground back up to the buildings which will in turn make it not look very realistic but for this example we can just create an octane diffuse and we'll make it about this grey and drop that on our city map just so that it doesn't bounce anything too crazy up um, so what I'd like to do next is just show that they can kind of make these buildings look a little bit more different so if we just render store render buffer you can use a shader to change the scale of the buildings rather than just these values so it'll feed so you could use a noise map to distribute the difference of different heights of the same buildings obviously the more buildings you've got the better but it does in turn add to render times this is quite good because we've got a lot of vram left so we could add more buildings but for this example i just wanted to keep it nice and quick and then if we do want to do that we just we can go into our shader and we can just add a general noise so now that's adding a quite a fair bit of variation but it's probably too much so i'm just going to crank this scale up to about a thousand as you've noticed if you clip it low it's darkening the and the black means that it's going to shrink the buildings to tiny little specks but we kind of want it to be almost uniform but just a little bit of variation so you can see what it's doing there it's quite cool so we can just change the height of a few buildings but actually we do want that distribution to be a bit wider so we get a slightly better pattern overall probably again too much probably a bit more 200 there we go so there's a bit more variation in the city more light coming through different bits so that in that will also help add so some buildings are smaller some are bigger if you like what you've got then awesome if not you can jump in the rotation as well and just change it so that buildings face a different way if you've got to direct it because of the light being in a certain place for a certain time of day um, but I would just leave that at default for this because I quite like what's happening so if we use this method this is almost done so you could get to town and like change the um, texture of the road and go add more street detail and that sort of thing but we'll leave that there for now but just get a nice render out of it so we'll create another camera so like what you you can see now is this is quite a nice looking frame you might want to add different buildings again to change the variation but now you could use this part of the image and design just like a little park or a, a little space for a scene to be in so that's quite nice as i said the more buildings you add the better this will look and also feel free to add low poly ones if they're not going to be if it's going to be a shot this wide like you can add pretty much just when you use Ian Hubert's technique and just extrude and protrude little bits because you're not going to notice so now you've seen that technique I want to show you another technique which is quite neat so I prefer this because it's easier to direct scenes and change things if people don't like it because the vertex map as soon as you change one polygon or if you move one building it changes the whole thing because of how random it is so what we would like to do is we'd like to create city blocks so if we just create a plane scale it up we'll probably duplicate it a few times and hide them for now so what I'll do is I just want to create a little L shape select invert delete so that's one section of the city C1 invert delete section two of a city you can see what i'm doing here now can't you and then again invert delete 
for this example, just to stick with those, don't need to use all five. So we've got sections of a city in there that we can use. So we can use these patterns to distribute and create our own little, little world. So if we just create a corner of a city for now, it takes a little bit more time to set up, but it means that you've got way more flexibility. So what we'd like to do is we've got all our buildings here, but what we'd like to do first is we'd like to just create an instance of each one. Let's just get this here. So for city distribution, we get this, this little section of the city here. And we just want to put all these buildings into this distribution. And we can probably make it less because it's just one little tiny section. Leave this type of surface and we'll drag the C1 on. So now we've got buildings on that distribution. So if we quickly have a look, let's just turn them off now for the instances. Cool. Okay, so we don't need that many. So hopefully you can see what's going to happen now when we do this again. So we've got one, one little section of a city. If we just pause that again, we can just duplicate this city distribution, but obviously get rid of these because it's going to add the models turn our instances on and drop them into the distribution instead. So rather than duplicating the models and adding to the VRAM, just having instances will help. Um, it still adds to the VRAM, but it's a bit less because it's just referencing the other object. Um, so this time we just want these instances to distribute on C2. And again, we will copy and paste this. We can keep, we can actually do that for this one because these are instance copies and then C3 for this one. So now we've got buildings on each one. So send that to the render. And there we go, we've got a city populated and you can, you can actually manually go in and add more buildings to just certain sections, which is fabulous because it does, trying to distribute a city and then finding the perfect shot can sometimes be quite annoying, which is the other method it's good for fast renders if you just want to like create one shot with like a smoky cyberpunk city from an aerial. But for this, if you was going to like do any scenes on the ground or or both where you do um, aerial shots and on this on the, the street, then it's good to create these little sections that you can have more control over and distribute. You can then actually use a scatter to distribute these sections as well if you was brave enough to do that sort of thing. So the more of these that you create, the more flexibility you've got. And equally, what you can do is you can create these sort of things for your mass, like your master shots. And then you could just have a normal one big plane at the background with a, um, like a scatter that's just generic so that you can just have, fill the background with other buildings. But if you want control over the ones that are in the foreground, this is the best technique I've found so far. So just before I leave, let's just create something that does look like a street so then if you was to like create the rest of the scene it's it's quite easy to see as well because you've got these little sections where to put the other details if you was gonna rely on octane scatter and it's just equally gonna be yeah it's just it's just a way better technique so hopefully you found this useful and i'll catch you on the next one <laughs>